Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church Worship, and if you're joining us online, we're glad to have you. Um, as you can see, Pastor Wynn is not with us. She's taking a short break. So we have Keona Bourne who will be bringing our message, and several of you have remembered her from the past, so it will definitely be worth um, being here for. I do have several announcements, um, a few corrections from the bulletin. So if you've got your bulletin, you might want to make some notes. Monday night Bible study, we do always meet Monday nights, except tomorrow's Memorial Day, so we will not be meeting tomorrow. Um, we are starting a new class, so The Chosen will be a series that Pastor Wynn is giving over the next several weeks, and she will be starting that with her Wednesday evening group, so if you want to come, there are videos, that kind of thing, you can join her. Handbell and choir practice are stopped for the summer, so we are at summer break, so we will not be having those on Thursday. Uh, things that are coming up, uh, we will be celebrating our grads, those will be next week, so we have three people who are graduating, and we'll be hearing about where they're going and what their next plans are. Um, and just a reminder, if you are ever interested in helping, that, that second week of the month is kind of busy for us. On Tuesdays, we do laundry day, and we will be moving that to Cruddy Duds, um, probably. Right now, it's at Lost Boys, so if you would like to help, go to Lost Boys this month, and then we'll look going forward. And um, we also have the community meal on that Saturday. So if you're interested in either of those, we always can use help with those. And I'm looking real quick. Any other announcements that I should have made? I think we're ready to start worship service then. Oh, let me get your view. Coming up, Bess. You guys have company this today, don't you? Yeah. So why are you guys here? Why did you come down for church? Are you guys doing anything else? <laughs> you were at somebody's house yesterday? Yeah, we had a party. A big Memorial Day party. All right. So why do you have a Memorial Day party? Why are we celebrating Memorial Day? What is it? You know? You don't know. Okay. Do you know why we celebrate Memorial Day? Not even likely. Okay. Well, you are not alone. There's a lot of people in this world that don't really understand why they celebrate Memorial Day. But we celebrate Memorial Day. I'm going to scoot you over just a bit, S. So he's there. So that we can remember service people who have died in the line of service. So they've died when they were serving our country, okay? Now, a lot of times we just think of anybody who's died and, and people who've been, been in the service, and those are good things too, but people who've died for us, why did they do that? What, what does our armed forces do for us? What do they do? You don't know again. <laughs> yes, Lydia. Exactly. So they, they give us a lot of freedom. So today, this morning, what Everett's doing right now, or Everett, sorry, Warren, I was yelling at the wrong one, wasn't I? To have freedom to come and come to church, there's a lot of countries that you're not allowed to do that. Um, to be able to have parties, there's a lot of countries where you can't do that. So there's a lot of things that we're able to do because we live here and we have people who were willing to sacrifice so that we could continue to do that. So that's what we celebrate today. Now, there is somebody who also made a sacrifice for us long, 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 long time ago. Any guesses? Who would we talk about in church? Jesus. So what did he sacrifice? Mm -hmm. He sacrificed his life for us to take our sins. And before he did that, he taught us a lot, didn't he? He taught us how not to tease our cousins. He taught us how to love everybody. He taught us lots of things. But the first and most important thing he taught us was to worship God. So God is the most important. 
And then we're supposed to love everybody else just like we love ourselves, okay? So Memorial Day, remember all the people that have given up something for us, okay? <laughs> Pray with me, and I have a treat that I think is a very Memorial Day treat because we always have this on our party. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many, many sacrifices that people have made. And we hope and pray that we can show the world your love by the way we live our lives. And we appreciate that we have the freedom to be able to do that. Help us to remember that every day as we meet all of the people that you would have us share your love with. In your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. This is... The, uh, now, get your fingers out. That's stuff, that's stuff from leftovers. This is, you guys, I know at least one of you like Rice Krispie Treats. We have Rice Krispie Treats every year for Memorial Day, and usually for 4th of July, too. I'm having a hard time getting this thing open. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know what? It's time for <coughs> prayers. What kind of prayer concerns do we have that are not on our list? Or do we have any updates from our list? <coughs> yes, ma'am. I asked for prayers for Lauren Gurman 24 years ago when she was 11 and fell and broke her arm and they realized she had type 1 diabetes. This last weekend, she struggled mightily and had a diabetic coma seizure, some combination of things for about 15 minutes. So if you would please keep my 35-year-old cousin's daughter in our prayers, I appreciate it. She's struggling really hard right now. Thank you. Lauren. Lauren. I heard from Betsy this morning, Betsy Gunn. She said her dad was still in a lot of pain. He had fallen at home several weeks ago. He has two fractured ribs and one broken. So she wanted us to have prayer for Larry. Anything else? Well, I would also ask that you pray for the people who are serving right now in our armed forces <clears throat> and for those who are traveling because we have several families who are out um, enjoying the Memorial Day weekend. So if you'll join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to seek your support and your reassurance. We know that through you all things are possible. You've heard our joys and our concerns, both those that we've lifted up and those that weigh on our hearts. We pray your presence is felt in each and every one of those situations and that everyone involved knows your love. Today we also are reminded of all of those who have given their lives in our freedom. Bless their families for the sacrifices they've made for us. And we thank you for the sacrifice Jesus made for us, taking on our sins and giving us the freedom to love you and to share in his many blessings. He taught us how you would have us live a full and faithful life, the life that you desire for us. And we thank you for so much that you've given us. He taught us how we come to you and how we pray. So please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Our scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to, pardon me, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, 
How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to, to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are called to ascribe to God, but what if we never come to know God? How shall we ascribe to God if we can't even worship God? Who is this God? And whom can we ask, talk to, sit with to learn more about God? Well, we'll look more at the Nicodemus story, and we'll see if we can gather more information, more courage, and more hope. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of this earth, creator of the other side of the earth as well, we give you thanks for where we sit, where we stand, where we worship. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds, that we hear what you would have us to hear today, O oh God that we also remember all the sacrifices that have taken place that we might worship just where we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The passage today is the infamous Nicodemus story. For those who've been in church many years, it's very familiar. As we consider today's scripture, let's recap this Nicodemus, who he was and what happened. Nicodemus was a Pharisee a member of the Jew Jewish ruling council. A Pharisee was Hebrew and knew scripture by oral tradition. They were laymen and scribes and not a part of the high priesthood. Even though the Pharisees were not the high priesthood, they had a reputation to live into and up to. Pharisees believed that the law that God gave to Moses contained both written law and oral law or teachings of the prophets and the oral tradition of the Jewish people. The Pharisees admitted the principle of evolution in law, that humanity must use their thinking skills to interpret the Torah and to apply it to present-day situations. So imagine being in a select group, the Pharisees. You are proclaimed as gifted, you're set apart, and progressive. You are respected. You live life, you experience life, and you adjust your responses in life based on new information that's coming at you daily. Sound familiar? You are proud to be a Pharisee. You are sincere and devoted through prayer and worship. You study God's law. You are righteous. You are untouchable. You speak for the real people, and you are real popular. And then you overhear this man. He's, he's not a Sadducee. He's, no, he's not a Pharisee either. But even he captures your attention. That's where Nicodemus was. He heard this Jesus creature and he said, who is this man? He speaks like me, but he doesn't. He speaks with a little more charisma a little more power, a little more authority. You, I think you've been there before. Each of us has been enamored by something or someone, and we're like, I want to know more. You were enamored by how someone spoke or how they moved, how an artist completed their work, how graceful a swimmer is in a swimming pool, how someone learned a language, played the piano, or played sports effortless, effort, I can't even say the word, effortlessly. And you were curious. You wanted to draw nearer, to figure out the nuances of the move, the language, how the tongue moves, how someone does their hair, how someone cares for the children with so much grace. But your click said, don't cross over, don't go over to that side. 
I know we have them. We all have cliques. We've got our groups of people that we stay in because they make us feel comfortable. They speak like us. They talk like us. They have the same values and beliefs we do. This is the same with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But you know, we always find a way to cross over when we find curiosity, when we find value, when we find something that just draws our attention. How can we ascribe to God if we're not drawn in? Now, the story of Nicodemus, I didn't learn it by reading the Bible. Mm -mm. I've been in church all my life. You know how I learned this story? Any guesses how I learned this story? Manette, any guesses? Children's message? It was music. The Nicodemus story for me was set to music by this group, I encourage you to look them up later on, called the, the Nightingale, Sensational Nightingale. And they sang this song with such gusto, but the music was wonderful too. You know, it was really about the music. It drew me in. And I heard this story, Nicodemus coming to Jesus at night. And he said, truly God is with you because of the miracles you do. Like, I remember it because of the music. But there's more to the song, to the story, to the person of Nicodemus. Jesus shares truth with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, a Pharisee who is called to adjust with the times, responds to Jesus with a question. He says, how can this be? Because again, Jesus told him, you must be born again. Well, think of these children becoming smaller instead of bigger. Can it really happen? I mean, we have movies like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but it's really a farce. We don't grow smaller. We don't shrink. Well, some people shrink, I guess. <laughs> okay, moot point. We don't go back into our mother's womb. We might go back to the beginning and hear the story. We might learn again things that we've heard before. We might meet new people who tell us the very thing our parents taught us, and we finally believe them. It sounds, though, like Nicodemus has met his match in this Jesus person. It sounds like Nicodemus doubted the Christ. It sounds like Nicodemus doubted his own method of connecting with humanity. Nicodemus was so enamored of Jesus. But Nicodemus had to protect his status. Nicodemus had to protect his income. Nicodemus could not cross over from his clique that he belonged to. So he waited. He waited until most people would be resting, sleeping at home somewhere. And he went by night. That is very important to talk to this Jesus person. We arrive at today's scripture with the knowledge that Nicodemus is so amazed, stunned, confused, and even afraid. Because what if I lose my income? What if I lose my status with my friends? What if? Jesus walks with us through all of those emotions. When we're amazed at something, when we're so excited when children love microphones and getting close to them, when they get so frightened they can't even speak into the microphone. God is with us through all of those emotions. Jesus knows what it's like to be amazed, enamored, hated, and feared. Jesus knows what it is like to have a desire for knowledge, for understanding. After all, this has been Jesus' life since he was a child. Anybody remember his mother and father had gone on with the caravan and they're lollygagging? And then they say, hey, wait. Anybody seen Jesus? Nobody had seen Jesus. So what did his parents do? They went back and they found him where? Uh-oh, Mene, they don't seem to know the story. <laughs> where did they find Jesus? Oh, yes, okay, in the temple. And he was sitting with the elders, and he responded to his parents with some smart butt remarks. Didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? He was found in the temple sitting with the elders, much to the dismay of his parents, who had been looking for him for a few days. 
in the night. So that Nicodemus could protect his status in life, he sits with Jesus to discern who Jesus is. In the night, Jesus tells Nicodemus things that even the Sadducees were not saying. So friends, when do we take time to sit with Jesus? Friends, when do we take time outside of the worship setting to ask our deep-seated questions? Hmm, when do we take the risk to ask the question? See, sometimes I don't ask questions because I don't want to be wrong. But you know, I take a risk, and I ask the question anyway, and six other people are like, oh my goodness, I've been wanting to know the answer. Take the risk, my friend. Sit with Jesus a little longer. Are we encouraged to think outside the box? Or can we only believe that the Jonah story is about Jonah being in the belly of a fish? Or can we think that Jonah was running away and he got swallowed up by his own pride that he was stuck in a cave, stuck in darkness for three days, and finally he decided, I can't live here. And the cave released him, or he was released, or he left the cave finally, and he emerges. And he goes to talk to the people he was called to talk to. And what do you think he would smell like once he emerges from that cave? What might Jonah smell like? I know I'm going creative here, so you don't know what answer to give. Take a risk. What might Jonah smell like if he's coming out of a cave that's submerged in water? Any answer? What? Somebody's trying it, okay? You believe? Okay, that's, that's an answer. <laughs> he might have been, Jonah, might have been smelling like dead fish carcass. So when he merges and he goes and talks to the people, and then he's like, where have you been? And he comes up with a story, because people might not want to hear that he's been sitting in a cave, But it's more believable. It's more miraculous. It's more astounding to be caught up in the belly of a fish and then have to reprocess all that God has given him. What if? What's wrong with thinking outside of the box? We're not changing the story. We're thinking deeper. We're putting some emotion on the people that we've read about so long. We're making sense of the fear, the frustration, the anger that also might be a part of the story. This helps me to expand my understanding of who God is. It started for me in fifth grade. I was 10 years old. I missed one week of school. I had strep throat, I still remember, because I was a very good student, so I didn't make anything less. I think they gave N's and S's at the time, so nothing less than an S. I was always satisfactory. But the week after I came back to school, I wasn't satisfactory anymore. I needed more work. How dare they tell me I needed more work? Well, here was the issue. They were working on main idea of paragraphs, right? And so the challenge with this main idea stuff is that we can all read the same passage and pick out a different main idea based on our perspective. But someone had already done the work 20, 30, 50 years before I was doing the work in the book. Someone had already decided the main idea of the paragraph. So my answers were wrong. Well, guess what? I didn't ascribe to that. I still fought, and I still fight it today. It's okay for us to learn these Bible stories and hear it one way, but as we're also given the permission to think, Thank you for that video, whoever put it together. Yes, we have opportunity to think in this country, in this state, in this city. It's okay to have a different idea than the person sitting next to you. Diversity is beautiful in word and language, even in education. So think outside the box. It's not always about right or wrong. It's about perspective. Me missing the main idea was the beginning of the launch of me being able to see beyond a box set up for humanity. There is beauty inside the box. There's more beauty outside the box. 
There is comfort inside the box. There is liberation and freedom outside of the box. I, too, have been to countries where people were not allowed to worship. In fact, one country I went to in 2017, we could only worship on Sundays and three hours on a Thursday morning. Now, I have a problem with that because I love to sing my churchy songs all throughout the week when I'm getting ready. And my mom and brother live with me, and often the music is loud. Can you imagine living on a compound or in a, in a I don't know other words for it, but a plantation and not being able to worship because the rule says you cannot worship Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Not being able to sing out songs out loud, not being able to pray aloud, because there are rules that prohibit you from saying, thank you, God. Can you imagine? We come to understanding concepts at different stages and ages in our lives. There should not be shame for that. However, we have children at 20 years old rushing to become millionaires because of the TikTok and the Instagram. And maybe that's okay, but what about doing things in stages? Learning things as we did. Going to school through 12th grade and then going to trade school or the military or even college. It's not wrong to want to be a millionaire. It's just not my perspective. So can I allow them, whoever they are, to be free and liberated and do things their way? We have women afraid to trust men who are not settled in their 30s. In fact, my friends who are married and have children are jealous of me because they say, I can do whatever I want whenever I want. I'm like, That's not true. i got to go to work. i got to make the paycheck. I've got to pay the bills. But then I've been jealous of them, too, because they have family in their home. They can bounce ideas off of one another. Perspective makes a difference, doesn't it? But what if it's not even about comparing what we don't have with what others do have? What if it's about using what we have to paint the world from our point of view and someone else on the same canvas paints the world from their point of view? What if it's about coming to understand other people just as they are? What if this life is about bringing light to others when their light is dim, not to overshadow their hurt and pain, but to join them in their pain until their light is bright enough so that they can get back to fullness of joy? Are you living the light? Or are you bringing the darkness? Do you need a bit of light? Do you have all the answers? Are you open to the possibility that there is another way? We are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, but our world inside here is on the same track we are. What about the world in the grocery store? Mene, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean we take them the Bible and say, hey, Nicodemus, what it means is we treat them with respect. That we say, oh, hello, how are you? It's as simple as that because there's some people who may never speak to anyone. I, years ago, I was going to this woman's event and I dressed up, it was a Mad Hatter tea party, so fun. So I dressed up as the queen of hearts and the ladies were all about 50 years older than I am. And I asked the question, I said, what's so important about this Mad Hatter's tea party? And they said, it's the only time we see one another. And I asked the question, because that's what I do, what about church? They said, oh no, we don't go to church anymore. This is our church. But their church was only one time a year, this Mad Hatter's Tea Party. So some people are longing for connection, and they don't want to come to church. But they want the relationship. Are we limited in our connection? Because we only want to see people at a certain place on a Sunday morning for about an hour? Are we limited in our connection because we don't want to dress up like the Mad, the, not the Mad Hatter, the Mad Hatter, the, the rabbit, the, the characters in Alice in Wonderland? We often don't try something new because we assume what worked for me will work for you. But that's not always true. There are some folks who are afraid of flying 
There's some folks who won't get on a train and ride across country. There's some folks who cannot walk the same pace as others. Some folks are afraid of water, so they won't even try to swim. And all of that's okay. And why do I say that there is this artist, she's probably gone on by now, named Olita Adams. And she sings this song, and I don't think she meant it to sing it to Jesus or God. But when I hear it, when I hear these lyrics, I'm like, oh, that's how God feels about us. I won't sing it. I'll just read the words to you. Olita Adams sums it up like this. She says, you can reach me by railway. You can reach me by trailway. You can reach me on an airplane. You can reach me with your mind. You can reach me by caravan. Cross the desert. I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you can. You can reach me by sailboat. Climb a tree and string rope to rope. Take a sled and slide down slope into these arms of mine. You can jump on a speedy colt. Cross the border in a blaze of hope. I don't care how you get here. Just get here if you can. There are hills and mountains between us. Always something to get out of. If, you had, if I had my way, surely you would be closer. I need you closer. You can windsurf into my life. Take me up on a carpet ride. You can make it in a big balloon, but you better make it soon. I don't care how you get here. Just get here. I believe Jesus calls to us to come to him however we see fit. The best way for us to reach Christ individually. Now, there are times I'll travel with Manet. We have before. But there are some times I have to take steps towards Christ by myself. But I also trust Manet well enough that if I had questions about God and Christ, I could come to Manet and ask my questions. You'd answer, right? I'll put her on the spot. My hope is that you have someone with whom you can talk. And it's not about having the right answers, but can we talk about it? Can we banter? Can we think together outside the box? Can we come just as Nicodemus did, but any time of day, not just at night, to ask the questions, what does it mean to go back into my mother's womb? What does it mean to be born again? What does it mean, this wind blowing, and I don't know where it's coming from? What do I need to know, Jesus? You can reach God by flying. There are times when I'm above the clouds and I'm like, oh, God is here. I assume you can reach God by scuba diving. I've never tried it before. I'm afraid to be underwater too long. You can reach God by walking barefoot in the sand, in the dirt, planting flowers in your own yard. You can reach God by talking to neighbors and friends. You can reach God by watching the children. You can reach God when you're alone. There are so many ways that God is able to receive each and every one of us and all that we have going on. So how do we ascribe to God? One moment at a time. One question at a time. One main idea at a time. One song at a time. One tear at a time which I believe God does collect and help us to write and remember our stories. Friends, it is Memorial Day weekend, and that means a lot of things across the world. We can also reach God by allowing others the same freedoms that we experience, the freedom of Christ's love for each and every person who comes across our doors, whether they're our home doors, the church doors, or grocery stores out in the world. Let us pray. Holy God, we are so glad that you accept us any and every time of day. Help us, Lord, to ascribe to you, to look to you, and give you all the glory that is due to you, O oh God, for the very breath we breathe, for the very healing we experience. For the moments, oh God, that you even slow us down so that we might turn to you. Hear the prayers of our hearts that we move out into the world full of your glory and full of excitement, that they see you in us.
without us even having to say a word, oh God, but encourage us. Help us to take risks that we also speak your word. In the name of Jesus, our saving Christ, we pray. Amen. May you go today being blessed with a wonderful word and being a blessing to those that you meet. Um, share the message that you've heard today with everyone that you meet and think about how we can do church differently so that we can reach those who haven't yet heard. Go today. Be blessed. Mm -hmm.